If you're struggling with your timing and you have a tendency to hit the ball late, there can be a number of different reasons for that. But in this video, I wanna talk about one very specific reason, and it's one of the biggest things that I find in players, and that is a lack of coordination at the hips. Tennis, people think about it as a hand-to-eye sport. We need hand-to-eye coordination, but the initiation of your strokes, the way that we kind of drive to initiate the use of the kinetic chain on all of our strokes initially gets driven from the hips. So if you don't have good coordination over your hips and you don't have balance between the coordination on each side, that can be one of the major limiting factors that prevents you from having good timing. So what I wanna do in this video is show you a really simple assessment to start to kind of figure out if this might be part of the problem. And then we're gonna talk about a couple of different ways that you can start to train and work on your coordination, which is then gonna to lead to much better quality timing on all of your shots. So the assessment is really simple. You're just gonna stand on one leg, raise the other leg out in front and internally and externally rotate it. So I'm just raising my leg forwards, externally rotating and internally rotating. So basically just twisting your leg like that, trying to do it as quickly as you can. Now I'm not holding on uh, for balance, but you can if you need to. This is a coordination assessment, not a balance assessment. So we want to see what your hip is capable of in terms of coordination. And if you're falling over, we're not gonna get accurate readings. So we're gonna do it on the right side, and then we're gonna do it on the left side and we're gonna compare the two sides. Now, in terms of the, the movements, we're looking for a few different things. We're looking for the accuracy, the rhythm and the speed. We're looking for kind of the endurance or whether you can keep on doing it or whether it starts off good and then it falls apart. And then, like I said, we're comparing it side to side because you need both sides working. As I load up for my forehand, I'm internally rotating on my right leg, I'm externally rotating on my left leg. Then as I drive into the stroke, I'm now driving external rotation in my right leg and internally rotating in my left leg. So the balance, the accuracy in the court and the speed that you can do these movements at is absolutely crucial for your ability to time your shots. So when we're thinking about accuracy, we're trying to keep the leg straight and just rotate from the hip. So I shouldn't see the pelvis moving, so I shouldn't see anything like this going on. It should just be the hip, or it should just be the leg that's rotating. I shouldn't see any back movement going on, it should just be the leg. So you can place your hands on these pelvic bones at the front and make sure that they're staying still. If they're moving, that's a lack of accuracy. If my foot is moving, but my knee is staying still, that's a lack of accuracy. We want the whole leg twisting. If the leg is going from side to side, that's a lack of accuracy. We want a nice straight twisting motion. So that's the accuracy in terms of speed. The faster you can do this, the better. Now, often what happens is people are okay at slow speeds and when they start to go faster, that's when the accuracy goes wrong. Another accuracy component is people can go and kind of do double movements. So instead of going all the way to there and all the way to there, they kind of do a little twitchy movement when they start to increase the speed. So we're looking at the accuracy and the speed. And then of course, comparing them side to side, is one side better or worse than the other? And the way that I want you to do it is test five seconds, then five seconds, then five seconds, then five seconds, and basically do three tests on each side to see if we've got endurance. Or are you really good for the first five seconds and then after a couple of attempts, things start to fall apart and the movement quality suffers. So that's how we're gonna do the assessment. Okay, how did you get on with the assessments? Did you notice any deficits in terms of the accuracy or the rhythm or the endurance? And how was it on the right side compared to the left side? Now, this is one of those things that it's often a really good idea to record yourself because a lot of players, unfortunately, don't have very good body awareness. They think they're doing one thing when they're doing a completely different thing. So definitely a good idea to record yourself or get someone else to watch you and to kind of learn those coaching points so then you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Now, if you were fantastic at it, really fast internal, external rotation, nice accuracy, nice speed on both sides, great. Then this probably isn't the thing that's limiting you in terms of your timing. We might be thinking more about visual things and other stuff that's going on that's preventing you from hitting the ball as cleanly as you want. But I find the vast majority of time, especially at lower levels, there are normally some very glaring deficits that we can start 
to work on. Now, in terms of what you then do, we have to find a way to improve your coordination because if you have deficits, you have stuff going on here, you're not just gonna step out on court, use pro-level footwork and you know have flowing, efficient biomechanics. That's not how it works. We've got underlying skills involved. So you need to do work to improve your coordination to then raise the level of tennis that you can play. And there's a couple of options for kind of what we might need to do. We can train coordination just by working on it in very simple ways. So, you know, just practicing circles. If I've got a deficit on my right hip, just practicing making circles with this hip. This is a coordinated movement. And by working on this at different speeds, I can actually challenge the parts of the brain that create and coordinate movement. So that can be part of the strategy. Obviously it needs to be progressive, so that's gonna be a good starting point, but over time you need to do it in slightly different ways and challenge coordination to keep things progressing because at the moment, you know, maybe your coordination is here, your goal level of tennis, you need a level of coordination up there, so you have to kind of work up to it. But we can directly train coordination or sometimes you might need to find ways to kind of switch things on because it can be a little bit complicated behind the scenes but we can actually test that stuff in real time so we can kind of do a, a coordination assessment so I find out there's a problem with my left leg and then potentially work on a vision drill where I'm kind of moving my thumb backwards and forwards looking at my thumb and that activates in the brain in such a way that it now improves your coordination and you can test that out so you can do the same thing with different types of movement so I could look at my thumb and turn my head in different directions and then test it to see whether it improved coordination. So we've got kind of the direct training where we're working on coordinated skills and then we've got this other stuff that we can do behind the scenes to hopefully wake up brain areas or activate brain areas in a certain way and that can be a really effective strategy for improving coordination and then over time by improving these underlying skills it's just going to allow you to play a much better quality of tennis because I've seen a very high correlation with this one. Um, much higher level players have fantastic internal external rotation they've got no problems as you go down through the levels it starts to get very very noticeable now if you would like help with this this is the sort of thing that i kind of work with tennis players on i use brain-based training to help them improve their skill level a lot of it's about improving vision so you can read where the ball's going faster so you can track the ball better a lot of it's about coordination, a lot of it's about focus and concentration. So lots of things that you can work on to really improve your tennis level. If you would like to learn more about it, I've created a masterclass that's gonna go into a lot more detail. I'll place a link up there so you can check it out. I'll place a link down there so you can check it out. Okay, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what I covered in today's video. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you found any deficits in your coordination and I'll catch you next time.